Good evening. I'd like to call the general committee meeting to order. Would everyone please rise for the, for the prayer and pledge of allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we call upon you this evening asking for your guidance in our decision making. Give us the wisdom to make our judgments based on the best interest of this community and the children we serve. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Smith, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Yes, ma'am. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Ms. Lochek. Mr. Campbell? Here. Mr. Egan? Here. Ms. Jackson? Here. Ms. Lee Bowman is not with us. Ms. Lemoyne? Here. Ms. Dysart? Here. Mr. England is not here. Mr. Long? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Warner? Here. And Ms. White? Here. Thank you, Ms. Voce. First item on the agenda tonight is an education item. Ms. Lemoyne? Thank you, Ms. Dysart. Agenda item number two is a Head Start program update, and we have Ms. Chantelle Scalinger here with us this evening. Welcome. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, as the governing body for our Head Start program, we are required to update you um, throughout the year with some of our um, information. I have some documents to review with you tonight. Everything tonight is just informational and does not require any board action. Um, so the first thing, 2.1, you'll see the governing body roles and responsibilities. Um, so just a brief history of Head Start. We're currently in our 32nd year of serving our Head Start students, and we have 112 um, slots and all are currently filled at this time. Um, going down to the board's rules and responsibilities, the board um, has a legal and fiscal responsibility to guide and oversee the program, and this is accomplished in several ways. Um, first is through monthly reports that we um, send to you guys monthly, and that is our financial report, our um, enrollment report. We also give you our medical and dental reports, and then also the monthly menus. We provide services through finance, maintenance, and food services. We also receive information from our sitting board member, which is currently Ms. Roslyn White, who attends all of our policy council meetings as well. And our policy council is comprised of um, parents from our Head Start classrooms and community representatives. We meet monthly. Um, and we share governance with you guys, and then we should be electing our offices hopefully at our January meeting um, so we can let you know once we have that settled. And then also all of our Head Start financial operations are audited as part of the school board system-wide audit. The next document you'll see 2.2 is our um, PIR, and this is our program information report, which we are um, required to submit at the end of our program year to the Head Start Enterprise System. And they take this information and collect data and help us to um, better our program for the following school year with everything that we submit to them. I won't go over every single piece of information because it is a lot, but just to kind of give you um, a brief of what each um, section includes. So the first one is program information. So with that is just our enrollment numbers. And even though we are set for 112 students, you'll see that we actually had 119 Head Start students walk through our door. We just had some drops, some kids moved or switched schools, went to a different classroom that wasn't a Head Start. So we served 119 students. Um, Head Start likes to know how did they become eligible, whether they were based off of their income, whether they fell below that poverty line, or if they were eligible based on um, Social Security benefits, food stamps, um, temporary assistance of needy families, or if they were a student with disabilities. The next section is our program staff. Um, they like to know is our program staff, um, what kind of degrees do they have, their language they speak at home. Um, then next is our health section. This is where the nurse fills out any health information from our students, whether they have diabetes, asthma, um, heights and weights, they want to know if anybody was under their weight limit, malnutrition, anything like that. How many students saw the doctor or also had a visit with the dentist as well, so our nurse keeps up with that monthly. Um, in this section, we also enter our disabilities, whether um, the student had autism, a developmental delay, they want to know how many students we had in those categories, what type of assessments we use, and then all of our family information as well, as far as are our families um, single parent families, are they being raised by grandparents, their education, 
um, while they are working household or they in job training, things like that will be found in that section. And then the last section is our coaching, which is something that has been implemented in the last three years. Um, we provide intensive coaching to um, our Head Start teachers and um, paras um, who are interested in participating in that. Next is the continuing application, our goals. Um, every year we have to submit an application for Head Start and we're still in the continuation portion of it right now. So we have to submit goals that we want to work on for the following school year. Um, our goals for this school year remain the same. We just had one change. We did add a new goal. And so our new goal that we added was goal number seven, which um, refers to mental health. Um, right now in Head Start, mental health is a big um, factor in making sure our staff and everybody is, um, you know, okay and that they are willing to come to work every day and how can we make that happen for them. So um, that was a big goal for us as a management team to make sure that we implemented that. Um, we started it at the end of last year, just going to give our staff some extra breaks during the day. Mm -hmm. um, we provided them with our health insurance from the school board, letting them know like places they can go to the gym, um, doctors that they could see for free, things like that. So we'll um, be updating that in January to send that back out to them so they have that as well. And then um, also providing um, our management team with just some training. So we've been watching webinars from the um, Head Start ECLIC website on mental health and how we can better prepare us for um, our staff. The last document you'll see is the summary of our um, assessment, which is the Teaching Strategies Gold. The first one that you have is just the summary from the last school year. And if you turn to page five, you'll see the chart, table one, that shows you our students entering in the fall and then exiting in the spring. Um, so our lowest scoring section was mathematics with only 2% of our preschool students meeting expectations in fall. Um, and then you can see in the spring, we left with 85% of our students meeting expectations. And our goal in preschool is to have 75% of our students mastering um, each of these areas of development. We had um, the highest coming in was physical development. And by the end of the year, 96% of our students were meeting that um, area development and that includes physical development such as like running, jumping, skipping, things like that, but also fine motor skills as well, holding a pencil, being able to use scissors, tearing paper. And then the last document is our data from this upcoming school, I mean this school year that just passed, sorry, this fall that just passed. We did our um, assessment at the end of October. And then you can see that still again, math is our lowest scoring area of development. Um, but this year we were um, excited to see that 13% of our kids were meeting or exceeding expectations. That's been the highest percentage of students meeting that. Um, in the last couple of years, we've been under 5% of our students coming in knowing many of these skills. And um, the lowest scoring skills are just right now um, ordinal positions, like being able to say what's first or second or third and um, identifying shapes. And it's not just identifying shapes, it's being able to tell you why it's that kind of shape or putting two shapes together and to see that, oh, these two things make a rectangle. Um, so that's the area that they're performing the lowest in at this time. And then the highest um, scoring was also physical development again for the school year. And so we'll test again in um, February, we'll have our winter da data and then again, we'll test in May to get our spring data. <coughs> Thank you, Chantal, for that Thank you. very um, comprehensive uh, presentation and overview. As you said, this item does not require any action mm -hmm. tonight, but we appreciate you keeping us abreast each month with all the financial data and enrollment data. And um, great to see the progress that our students are making already. So thanks Thank you. to you and your staff, all of the teachers and aides throughout the district that are doing a tremendous job with the early uh, childhood program. Thank you. Questions from the board? Mr. Warner? Uh, I just, just a statement, yeah, when you get your um, officers, mm -hmm. if, when you, if you can come back and just tell us who, who the officers are. No problem, are. Yes. yes. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you. it. No problem. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Just briefly. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Long. 
Um, refresh my memory. Head Start's open just to three-year-olds or four-year-olds? Four-year-olds, yes. Four year olds. Okay. Four year olds. They have to be four by September 30th of the current school year. And it's based on need, correct? Correct. Um, it's based on income that they fall below the poverty line, or we have some indicators that are automatic qualifiers, such as um, this year they implemented food stamps. Any family that's on food stamps automatically qualifies. Um, any student that receives Social Security benefits, they automatically qualify. Um, if they are um, a student with disabilities, they can qualify whether they're over income or under income because we do have some slots for over income families for that as well. Yes. And I see where you're funded for uh, 112. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have to turn anyone away? No, we um, have universal preschool. So any student that does not qualify for those 112 slots, we're able to slot them into our other grants. So we have LA4, we have AG, we have Title I, and we have EEF. So right now, currently, we're sitting at 432 preschool students. So, uh, so no, no four-year-olds that qualify are turned away? Nope. Everyone is in our school system, yes. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Chantel? And we want to thank you, Ms. White, for serving on the Head Start Policy Council. And I know you said you all are electing some new officers. Mm -hmm. We want to thank all of the parents and community uh, stakeholders that serve on that board. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lemoyne. Next item on the agenda are um, personnel uh, appointments and items you have before you. Good evening, Ms. Pritchard. Good evening. You can see um, I'm excited because we actually have one of our student teachers from UNO who's graduating on Friday, and we just hired her to um, fill in a recently vacated kindergarten position, so we're excited to see that. Okay, are there any, any questions? questions? Mm -hmm. um, I see that we have a retirement. And retirement's always difficult to see, but you know, um, Janine Armstrong, who is retiring as a, a school nurse, and Janine, yes. I don't know how many years she's with us, but many years, and um, she's done a fantastic job and has been awesome to work with and work for with all the other nurses and with our students. Yes. So we want to thank Janine for your many years of service and to wish you a very happy retirement, but you will be missed. Thank you, Janine. And also, we also have the two appointments that mm -hmm. we discussed. Um, well, that you know, at the last meeting. At the yeah. last meeting, the yes. The um, uh, supervisors of special education, mm -hmm. Mr. Joe Cipollone, and then also um, another supervisor for special education, Ms. Allison Grove. Yes. And we want to just say um, congratulations to both of you, and we know both of you will do a fine job. And um, you know, we look forward to working with you as a special education um, supervisor. Thank you. Anyone else? I just want to comment that um, you know, Ms. Armstrong, as she retires, she has done an excellent job. I know she's been primarily working with our preschool program as a nurse. Um, and Laura McGinnis, who is our head of our school nursing staff, um, has already found a replacement. Mm -hmm. So we are very fortunate that yes. we will be, we've had a, another nurse who uh, has been doing some substituting for us who is looking for a full-time position with us. So we'll be filling that immediately. Yes. So we won't have a vacancy in that particular area. So. And she did accept today. She did accept A few today. minutes ago, yes. All right. Yes. So she'll be on next month's next month. <clears throat> report. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boche. Thank you, Ms. Pritchard. Okay. All right, next item is a uh, finance committee item. Mr. Warner. Thank you, Mr. Dice. Uh, bid tabulations for bid received for food products period of January 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2023 for class 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 seasonings, stapled, staples, canned goods, frozen foods, poultry and eggs, meat and meat products, and seafood products. Mr. Morrell. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. So, uh, yes, I'm here to ask permission to accept the bid tabulation that you have in front of you. 
uh, for the uh, bid periods of January 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2023. The 28-page uh, document that you do have in front of you is a compiled list of the three vendors that uh, put in bids for all of our dry products and seasonings and everything that we use. Um, so I'll just ask uh, permission to accept that bid. All right. Any yeah. questions for Mr. Murrell? Yes, sir. Mr. Smith? I'll make a motion that we accept the bid tabulation. I'll second it. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Smith, a second by Mrs. White. Do we have any questions? I have one. Mrs. Dysart? Yeah. Mr. Burrell, the uh, company for Com. Yes, ma'am. They, they are fairly new, correct? Yes, ma'am. They are, they're out of uh, Prairieville. They're what? They're out of Prairie, Prairieville, okay. Louisiana. Um, they did, it's a uh, fast, pretty grown company. Done some research and I've met with the uh, vendors a couple of times. They came back and brought some samples and everything. So everything uh, checks out. Um, and they're actually supplying a few other local parishes. Um, so they're kind of growing and expanding a little bit. But they were very, very, um, they won quite a bit. They're kind of just new to it and they are just bidding on dry items like canned goods and a few spices. Mm -hmm. They're not getting into any of the fruits and stuff as of yet or anything like that. So, um, okay. but very, very uh, competitive, extremely competitive company. Thank you, Mr. Morrell. And, and the motion on floor is to go with the lowest bid on all, uh, all items, correct? Yeah, okay. that was my, we went with the lowest bid on all the items. Yes, there was um, two we items available. that we, um, we had to change and it was a few cents higher. Uh, for some of the, one of the canned goods because it, it didn't meet any uh, nutritional value because I do have to follow regulations from state and federal regulations upon nutritional value, right. but everything else was um, lowest bid. Okay. All right, any other questions? Just Mr. Long. Briefly. Um, Mr. Morrell, the, uh, these prices, they are just good for six months, correct? Yes, sir. We, because of the, the size of the bid, um, and then um, I've been taught working with my predecessor, Ms. Bloom was here. She also did every six months to try to ensure that we get the lowest possible prices. Um, I've been working with a couple of my colleagues from other parishes too, kind of asking like what they do. Some parishes do year bids, some do six months. But, but uh, we're kind of consistent in staying with the six month bid so we can, because right now the prices of food, as we all know, is fluctuating so high. Um, so we're just trying to make sure we kind of keep it to a minimum and make try to keep our prices as low as possible. So you're hoping that after six months the prices will go down when we rebid? Well, if we put a bid out for a year at a time, they tend to bid higher because they're trying to see how much inflation would be a year from now, right? So instead of we trying to capture the lowest possible price for those six months. So, you know, if you bid on something that's a year out, the companies or vendors would tend to give you a higher bid. You know, like, let's say, for instance, a, a case of corn, right? They may bid $20 for a case of corn for these six months. Well, if you ask for a year bid, they may bid 27 or $28 for that case because they have to honor that price for a year. So we could essentially be paying a lot more for that case of corn for the next six months. So that's why we just do it in six month intervals so we can assure that we get the lowest price for that, that product. Okay, so you're taking in consideration the uh, inflation. That's the main purpose of going yes. six months. So I think we normally always used to go for a year. Um, year bids or no. milk products mm -hmm. or the milk and bread. Oh, okay. Some, some are a year, some are half a year. Okay. depending on the type of goods and then uh, different equipment, large or small equipment. So okay. it's a different line. So just, just this bid alone, because this is the biggest, the biggest bid that we put out, um, this is why we do this bid for six months, because this is, is what we spend the majority of the money on, is on this bid. So um, like I said, and then milk and uh, bread products or once a year, because those, those don't fluctuate as much. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir. Any other questions from any other board members? So, Mr. Morrell, um, can you like give us an idea of like what the percentage has gone up from uh, 
inflation has caused on? I mean, you don't have to. It's, you don't have to do this tonight. It, it's a. It's a. You can report tremendous. Back. Like for instance, uh, I'll give you a situation. When I first got here, a case of pineapple slices was twenty-seven dollars. Right, and then um, I know in the last bit, and even here, it was upwards of fifty, fifty-five to fifty-seven dollars wow. per case. Wow, big difference. So it, it's tremendous. And then you know, depending on um, other products and shortages, or you know, those cans or those pineapples that are produced, they it touches so many hands. Whether it's a shipping or building pallets, cardboard, printing, plastic, metal, or aluminum cans. Right. All of that contributes to all of those prices and inflation that's going up. Yeah. All right. That's not good news. <laughs> it, it, it's, it is, it's, yeah, I, I try to, to in using work room with the USDA and the commodity, um, I'm doing my best as far as trying to use my commodity money for proteins, and that's really the big high, dial, high dollar items such as like ground beef, ground turkey, uh, cheeses and things like that. So trying to offset as much as I can to use that uh, commodity money towards uh, proteins and chicken and things like that. So that it, it'll help out a whole lot as much as possible. Yeah, appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Morrell. Yes. All right, so we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Smith, a second by Mrs. White. All in favor, please cast your votes. Motion passes 9-0. Thank you. All right. Um, item 4.2. Consideration approval to authorize the vice president to be added as an authorized signer on all St. Bernard Parish school board bank accounts. Ms. Boche. Um, this is just a technicality to have an additional signer on the um, you know, on the checks. We currently have the president and the secretary of treasurer, who I am. We want to add the third officer, which is the vice president. I'll make a motion to add the vice president. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Lemoyne. We have a second by Mrs. Jackson. Any discussion? Questions? Mr. Long? Ms. Roche, so that means that this would be a, a, a extra signature or? This well, it requires two of, signatures, but okay. then we would have the option of three people. Oh, I got you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Any other questions? All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Vote your machines. Motion passes 9 0. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Dysart. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Next item is an executive committee item, Mr. Long. Thank you, Ms. Dysart. Okay, um, it would be school board redistricting technical corrections. Uh, and it looks like uh, it didn't involve every district, but uh, a few districts, correct, Ms. Loche? It, it really doesn't uh, change or amend any districts. When Ms. Crumhorn read over the resolution, there were a few typographical errors on the resolution and a directional error, like easterly instead of westerly, oh. that type of thing. So it ap it just changes nothing. It just cleans up um, some technical typographical errors okay. so that she's asking us to, um, and, you know, Volpe was spelled incorrectly and one typed incorrectly. So it's just to clean it up for her records and she's asking that we do so tonight. So we'll need a, a motion to uh, recommend this to the full board where it could be uh, read into the minutes? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion. <coughs> okay. We have a motion by Mr. Smith. A second. A second by Mr. Warner. Any further discussion? Okay. Please vote your machines. Motion passes. 9 zero. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is superintendent's notes. Ms. Boche. I really don't have anything at the moment. I'll save it for the regular meeting. Okay. All right. Is there a, a motion to adjourn? Motion by Mr. Campbell. Second by Mr. Egan. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you and good night. And wait a minute. And 
again, let's just wait one minute. We will um, have our regular monthly board meeting in just a few minutes, okay? All right. Man, Egan, you've been getting real good at doing it at second to adjourn. Good evening. I would like to call the regular monthly meeting to order. Would everyone please rise for the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we call upon you this evening asking for your guidance in our decision making. Give us the wisdom to make our judgments based on the best interests of this community and the children we serve. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Mr. Egan, would you lead us in the Pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Roll call, please, Ms. Fosha. Campbell. Mr. Egan. Ms. Jackson. Ms. Lee Bowman not with us. Ms. Lemoyne. Here. Ms. Dysall. Here. Mr. England is not here. Mr. Long. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Warner. Here. And Ms. White. Here. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Voce. Before we go on to the first item on the agenda, I would like to take this opportunity um, and this privilege to recognize three of our board members who will, um, this tonight will be their last meeting. And um, so we'd like to recognize tonight Mr. Shelton Smith, who has been with us for five years. And Shelton, you've been a, a wonderful board member. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to work with you um, and on behalf of all of the board members and the administration and our entire staffs. We want to thank you for everything that you've done and brought to this board and worked in unison and cooperation. So we want to thank you. And um, from Ms. Foche and all of the board members, we want to present this plaque to you. It's just a small token of our appreciation for the wonderful um, years that we've had um, the ability to work with you. So thank you very much, Shelton. And if you would, come on up. <laughs> Just want to say thank you to all of my board members. Uh, it's been a total privilege and honor to serve on the school board um, beyond my wildest dreams. It's, I've learned so much from this board. Um, came with not a whole lot of knowledge of what go on inside St. Bernard Parish School System, but leaving with a almost a complete understanding of how day-to-day um, -day operation is ran and just so much. So again, just want to say thank you. I'm um, very appreciative uh, for the plaque that was presented to me and have the opportunity to serve on the board and to represent District 9. So thank you.
Thank you, Shelton, and we will miss you. Okay, next we would like to um, recognize Mr. Bill Egan, who has served this board for 27 years. Wow. And Bill, it was an honor and privilege to work with you and to have your input and, your, your, um, and all your knowledge of the law and everything you brought to this board. And we want to just say thank you, and um, we will miss you greatly. And for the jokes, for the, 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 uh, the um, all of the positive things, the, you know, you would always enlighten us at the end of some really hard decision making. So we thank you very much, and you will be missed, Bill. Mrs. Dysart, I came not knowing what. Oh, see that? I'm learning. He's on. I'm on. He's on. See? <coughs> you know the old dog teaching them no tricks? It's something <laughs> different. But anyway, uh, and I thought I said, you know, I'd like to see what's going on in the school system. I had two children, both of them attending schools here at uh, Shalmet High and, of course, at AJ. And uh, they sort of said, Daddy, we want to go to school in the parish. So, lo and behold, I applied and I was fortunate to begin serving. Uh, I've made many, many friends from y'all and uh, I tried not to be too lengthy <laughs> or if there was something I really knew what I was talking about, I would tell you. But, uh, you know, I am so proud and honored to be able to serve with this board. Every one of y'all. Sean, I gotta be truthful with you. You've been a, a real good friend and a fantastic board member. And guess what? I'm not gonna name everyone, but everyone that's here, I want to thank y'all. I want to thank Doris and everybody. I want to ask the teachers. I want to know the people that, that fed the, the students. I want to know the guys that fixed our trucks. I mean everyone. I want to give them a thanks. And even our kids because they've had, they have had to go through some things that I'm not sure I could go through again. We know that little bug really, it was hard to believe that what had, had taken place and what happened. Uh, you know, we all know we had the masks on our face. Uh, just a little bit that I had, I was kind of afraid to go to the bank because I thought I was a, <laughs> a better driver. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's been a pleasure to serve with y'all and I never thought I'd feel the way I feel now. I'm going to miss y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and we're going to miss you also. Okay, and um, next, uh, we just want to recognize um, Mr. Clifford England who has served as our president the past couple of years and been on this board for 28 years. Jeez. And um, I'm sorry that Mr. England could be, not be with us tonight, but we have a beautiful plaque for Mr. England. And um, he has been uh, a stand-up guy, 
Um, you know, he's, he's made some tough decisions just as, as well as many of us around this horseshoe. And um, he's been a, a friend to all of us. And um, we just want to say we'll miss you also, Mr. England. And um, we want to thank you for your many years to your district and to the school system. And um, we will give you your plaque at a later time, or not plaque, but the beautiful diamond um, and a rough, not real diamond, but <laughs> <laughs> diamond's hot. Right. Um, but anyway, thank you, Cliff, and um, we will miss you also. Thank you, Cliff. And I'm, I apologize, I didn't read the, um, the words on the plaque for Sh Shelton, Bill, and Cliff, but it's, it reads their names, and then it says, in recognition and appreciation of distinguished public service and leadership to the St. Bernard Parish School Board. And those words mean so much. And so, again, thank you all for your service, and uh, each and every one of us will miss you. Thank you. Ms. Oche. Yeah. I, you know, and, and there's so much dissension sometimes even around the state when you have boards and you have superintendents and people are fighting and uh, you take people with differing and opposing points of view and you put them together and you try to build some consensus to work on what is best for the school system. And that's what this board has done for years and years and years. You know, you look at Bill with its 27 years, Cliff with 28, Shelton, sort of the baby of the board with five, <laughs> with five years of service. But I think the community also has to realize what we've gone through in those years and the leadership that has been exhibited, you know, by these people. Uh, when Katrina hit us in 2005, which was 22 years ago, two of these gentlemen were on the board with many of you as well. And the effort to take what happened to this community and to lead the way back, not only for the school system, but for the community as a whole, took a tremendous amount of leadership and dedication. And there was a lot of pain and tears and uncertainty. And through the leadership of the people here, we have rebuilt a school system with physical facilities that are second to none, implemented you know, educational programs that are top notch within the state. Um, we have done it with an incredible uh, budget in terms of what we've gotten from insurance and FEMA and many different avenues and we've never had a question cost, we've never had anything to quote pay back, we've never had any lawsuits filed over um, any of those decisions that this board has made. And I do, you know, I want to applaud really the, the diversity as we look around this, this horseshoe. And I'm talking about diversity of professions of people. Um, we have educators on the board. The three gentlemen that we're losing, we have a small business owner who I think is pretty big business at this <laughs> point who's built up an incredible business of his own and has done that, and those skills have translated to this board very effectively. Uh, Mr. Egan, with his 27 years as an attorney in the legal profession, as we've made decisions around this table, has lent his expertise to many of the decisions that we have made from his perspective, from his profession. And then Mr. England, who is probably one of the most knowledgeable people that we've had as a re retired from banking and such. I know Mr. Warner over there is in banking as well. But the expertise that Mr. England has had in terms of the financial background and experience in decision making has been unmatched. So we are losing, I think, three very um, wonderful and effective and board members who have contributed so much to our children and to this community as a whole. And while we're ready to welcome three new members, I know it's sad as we sit here, you know, with the three that, um, you know, are exiting our board, but I know that 
and I've been told, you know, I can call on any of you at any time, and you'd be willing to come and help, either, you know, to volunteer or to help us or to lend the expertise that you have. So thank you, gentlemen, very much for the service to this community and to the children in our school system and to those of us around the table and to me in particular. So thank you. You won't be far away and uh, let's keep in touch, okay? Anyone else? Okay. <coughs> Next item on the agenda or um, the communications update. Super news. Hello, Mrs. Pritchard. Good evening, everyone. We have a special edition of Super News to present to you tonight featuring our um, Teachers of the Year for this year. So we hope you enjoy this last episode of Super News for the year of 2022. And now from the desk of the superintendent's office, it's time for Super News. On today's very special edition of Super News, we will shine the spotlight on a dynamic dozen of educators working on schools across our district. It's time to meet these outstanding teachers as we celebrate our Teachers of the Year. A good teacher has to be willing to work with others, with their team and with parents. I think that all good teachers love their students genuinely because we have to educate the whole child and not just teach content but build their social emotional skills and their self-esteem. How much love and um, compassion I bring to um, my students, um, how much I want to see them learn and grow. I am definitely someone who's tried to lead by example and show enthusiasm and motivation for the profession and when we take on things like new curriculum or new trainings, I try to really embrace that and lead the way as best I can. I try to get to know the whole student. I go to their rec basketball games. I go, I try to coach every sport. I try to meet them at PE or art and do something with them there. Just kind of trying to be more than just their academic teacher, but kind of a, a caring adult that can be there for them when they you know, go through the many struggles of being a kid. I take kids as they are, as they come to me. I love them for who they are in the moment, and I try my best to help them heal from whatever it is that's causing them difficulty to get them placed in alternative school. Getting to know them, their personalities, what they're interested in, me learning, it, to me it also I feel like teaching keeps me young. So because I teach the little bitties, the four-year-olds, they come from three different distinct backgrounds when they, before they come to me. They either come from a, being a, from a stay-at-home mom, family. They either came from a preschool program or they've come from a daycare. And so those, just trying to merge those three personalities, those very different, you know, some are very independent, some are very dependent, and trying to get them used to school and um, I guess to adapt well in school in classroom setting. My favorite thing about teaching my little students is that their excitement and their love for learning and even when they're having a bad day usually I can help them make the day a little bit better by just loving them, teaching them and caring for them. You want to just basically always remember that every child is someone's child. Um, I'm a mother so I always try to tell myself, be the teacher I would want my own children to have. Treat the other children as if they are my own children. Well, if they're not in my classroom, they see me around the school, and I'm always dressed up in some kind of goofy costume or something to try to get my kids engaged into whatever we're teaching, whether it be a pirate for War of 1812, because we just taught about that, with John and Pierre Lafitte being a pirate, so the kids enjoyed that. I can make them understand that learning benefits them. Whatever they want to do, learning benefits them, and that they are capable of learning. You know, whatever the situation is, they can learn something 
from it. Most of my children need extra attention, either academically or behaviorally or both. And uh, a smaller school setting allows me to have more one-on-one -on -one time and really get to the bottom of whatever it is that is keeping them um, from achieving their potential. You have to build a relationship with the kids. Um, I feel as if you can get to know kids, then um, you can get them to learn. But anytime you know a teacher comes up to me and says, "Oh, I, they were doing this great thing today," it's it's you know that's little mini successes for them, but it's also a success for me. It, it makes me feel like, all right, you know, a lot of these things are very difficult and hard, but we're slowly getting there. Um, academically, when of course, when I see a good grade, I, you know, I celebrate that. But in my room, it is a little different. It is you got to celebrate the small successes and hope. With that continued celebration, there'll be bigger and bigger successes along the way. To have that feeling that I always had those students engaged is what kind of makes me keep going because to make to see those students' growth is just the greatest feeling. To see that students' light bulb go off and know that they, I got them to that point where they're able to make those connections. I think most importantly, though, uh, what I am I am trying to teach them. Um, are some of the themes of this year, to be honest with you, of like gratitude and kindness and compassion. Um, we think that those things are sort of innate human, they just sort of come out of us, um, but they are learned behaviors, learned skills, just like reading, just like writing, just like arithmetic, just like riding a bicycle. I'm grateful for the education I personally received, the direction I got from my teachers definitely helped me discover my purpose and who I was meant to be and what my calling would be in life. When I was in school at Lacoste Elementary, once a bulldog, always a bulldog, um, when I was in school, I had teachers who really who instilled in me a sense of, of education and values that I've always wanted to pass on to, to students. and. Um, I've, I can't remember a time that I did not want to be a teacher or an educator. I really do enjoy teaching in public school at Shelman Elementary. It has challenged me to dig deep, to be a better teacher, to be more understanding, and to realize that there are children who really, really need their teachers. Whenever we have to take on new curriculum especially, they provide us with a lot of professional development as well as the tools to implement it correctly. But more importantly, I think at a school level, I feel loved and supported by my coworkers as a person. I have three children who have gone through St. Bernard Parish Public School System. Um, one is about to be an attorney, and one is a nurse, and I have another one that's about to graduate. And um, so obviously my children are very successful in this school system, and I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm very blessed. I'm a, I, I have a great life. Um, at school, I really appreciate that we are all on the same page. Everybody has the same goal. And there are, there's such a wide variety of talents and skills that our faculty brings. Um, and everyone is always willing to help. I'm definitely thankful for my coworkers at work because without them, I wouldn't complete the school year. <laughs> It's a tough task. Um, and I'm thankful for my five kids, my husband, and just being able to get up and teach every day. I think it's getting to know the whole community. It's, it's teaching, but being, you know, after a couple of years, you kind of become established in that community. And I've really enjoyed that because people from St. Bernard, especially people from Violet, Louisiana, have such unique personalities and have so much to give and so much like knowledge that does that that goes so beyond the classroom that it's it's been fun kind of learning from the people and the students there and and kind of almost feeling a little bit a part of the St. Bernard Parish uh, down the road community. Favorite thing, greatest thing about about Shelmont High School specifically um, you know is, is these kids are amazing they're bright, they're talented, 
they're kind, um, they're dedicated, um, they're really just simply amazing people. We feel like a family and I think we've bonded especially in the last few years over being apart from the pandemic. It made us appreciate even more being able to be back together in the building and then having to pick up the pieces after Hurricane Ida and then specific to our community, the tornado. It really showed us how much we can depend on each other, support each other and love each other through very serious circumstances and overcome it together. We'd also like to congratulate our three parish-wide winners who will represent St. Bernard Public Schools in the next round of competition. Congratulations to you all. And just as we celebrate these teachers today, we would also like to recognize our future teachers, those students who are part of the pre-educator program at Shaman High. Let's learn more about this incredible program and opportunity. St. Bernard's Pre-Educator Program is one of the ways in which our district is building our teacher workforce. The hope is that our students will be inspired to not only teach, but to come back and do so here in the St. Bernard Parish school system. Ms. Moynan works hard to make sure we have a good idea about what working in education is really about. She has invited a lot of visitors to speak with us special education supervisors, State Department of Education employees, school board members, and college professors. We have gotten to see education through all perspectives, showing us the type of work we can do in the field. I love this class because we learn through observations, many of which are off campus. This year we visited Lacoste Elementary, Trist Middle School, and CHS. We actually sit in classrooms and observe teachers and students go through their lessons. The best part is that we visit all types of classrooms in different grade levels and subject areas. I found out pretty quickly that elementary school was not for me. I know with certainty that I want to teach middle school. This has been one of my favorite classes. We do so many fun things this year. We went to the Teachers Leaders Convention. There we met all kinds of teachers and leaders from all over the state, and we learned a lot about teacher strategies. And we also went on field trips to Nunes Community College and the University of New Orleans. And we went there to see their education program. At Nunes, we got to sit and talk to current and former students. And at UNO, we got to sit in several classes to see what they were like. It was really great to see what the next step of this journey is, and I really enjoyed it. It has been a joy to lead these students in their exploration of education as a career option and to play such a vital role in developing the future workforce of the St. Bernard Parish Public School System. I can't wait to see my students return to us in four to six years. We're so grateful to our teachers of today and tomorrow and thankful to all of you for tuning in. Have a happy holiday and we'll see you next year on Super News. Where we always let the Super News roll. Okay. <coughs> Great job, Ms. Richard. And um, our congratulations go out to all of our teachers of the year. It's always wonderful to hear from them. and. Um, and congratulations to each and every one of them as um, the teacher of the year at their individual schools and then also our parish winners. And uh, to the educators, uh, new incoming new educators, um, it's wonderful to see so many of our students are interested in education because we definitely need them to come our, back our way in four to six years after their college years. And it's great that they're interning too and to get a taste of what it's really like to teach. Okay, um, anyone else? Mr. Egan, did you have a note? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just okay, Ms. Lemoyne. I just wanted to thank and commend uh, Ms. Moynan and everyone in the pre-educator class. Um, these students actually came to Nunes to take part in a teacher summit. 
on a Saturday in the pouring rain on their Thanksgiving holiday, and they all showed up to, to be engaged and learn. And I think that's a testament to how committed they are to um, being interested in the teaching profession. So I want to thank all of them and thank Ms. Moynan for all of her hard work. Ms. Vocek? And just piggybacking on that, those kids are in that pre-educator pathway. Um, I think in January we're going to have Eileen LaBeouf come and talk more of the new enrollment because we had over 330 kids taking um, dual enrollment classes this fall and we're expecting as many if not more in the, for the spring semester. But these particular students are also taking two dual enrollment classes that are specific to the first two courses in education as well as being offered the um, dual enrollment classes in the core areas of math and English and um, they've taken Spanish you know for foreign language credit and such so many of the students that you saw in this particular clip will exit high school with a significant amount of college credit already earned and hopefully we're getting them to seriously consider coming back to us as future teachers. So it's been a tremendous program. Anyone else? Okay, thank you again, Ms. Richard. Fine job. Okay, next item on the agenda is the approval to incorporate the report of the general committee meeting of December 6th. 2022 into the December 6, 2022 regular monthly meeting, and that would be a recommendation to approve those. So moved. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Warner, seconded by Mr. Smith. Any discussion? Please cast your votes. Motion passes 9 0. Next item is a recommendation to approve the regular monthly meeting minutes of October 25th, 2022 as published on December 2nd, 2022. Is there a motion on the floor at this time? There's a motion by Ms. Lemoyne, seconded by Mr. Um, Smith. Any discussion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes, 9 0. Next item of personnel changes for December 2022, and we won't need any recommendation or um, motions on this item. We did review those personnel changes at our last meeting, the committee meeting. <clears throat> any discussion? No? Okay. Next item is approval of the lowest bid on bid tabulation for food products, period of January 1st. 2023 through June, June 30th, 2023 for classes 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, seasoning, staples, canned goods, frozen foods, poultry, eggs, meat, meat products, and seafood products. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion by Mr. Long. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Jackson. Any discussion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 9-0. Thank you. Next item is an approval to authorize the vice president to be added as an authorized signer on all St. Bernard Parish School Board bank accounts. There was a motion I'll by second. Mr. Smith. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. White. Any discussion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 9-0. Thank you. Next items and adoption of the resolution for school board redistricting. These were only technical corrections and typographical typographical corrections. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion by Mr. Smith. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Lemoyne. Any discussion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 9-0. Next item are items to be placed on the next committee meeting agenda. And these items to be placed on the next meeting agenda may be added prior to the committee meeting. Anyone have anything? Okay. All right. Next item, superintendent's notes. Ms. Vocek. Um, just in your packet is our monthly budget to actual statement for the um, general fund for the month of November. 
Uh, it's just there for your information and review. And if you have any particular questions at some point, you know, you can feel free to ask and discuss them. I uh, just wanted to mention the Christmas show um, last week at Shelmet High School was just wonderful as usual and to commend all of the um, sponsors, band director, voices, um, gifted ta or talented teachers for their hard work with the students and the show was exceptional. Um, we have all of our schools with their Christmas productions and we talked about them last week. They're going on all of this week. I know that the elementary schools are doing their Christmas caroling tomorrow night um, and that Trist in St. Bernard Middle tomorrow night and Thursday night will have their productions and Saturday will be all of the elementary schools as well as um, Andrew Jackson at the you know Cultural Arts Center as well so they're on the individual school websites you know the parents of the students know and uh, I think if you walked into the Shelmet High Cultural Arts Center I mean, the lobby looks magnificent. A lot of the work of the students um, are being displayed as well. And it was just a very, very nice and wonderful productions. And it, it shows the hard work of our teachers and the talent of our students uh, each and every night. So, And then for everyone else, next Friday will be our last day before the Christmas break, and I'm sure all the kids are looking forward to it, as well as all of our teachers and staff. Uh, so we'd like to just wish everyone a very happy holidays, Merry Christmas and happy holidays uh, in the coming weeks. And um, just to echo Ms. Foche on the, our, our student performers, uh, the Christmas at the complex, our, all of our students did an excellent job of showcasing their talents. So thank you to them and also all the sponsors. And also the Christmas at the Islenos um, mm -hmm. Museum was also very well attended by many of our elementary schools and a fine job by our students and also by the teacher sponsors and all the parents who help out too. So thank you. And uh, anyone else? Ms. Lemoyne. I wanted to thank the um, members of the St. Bernard Volunteers for Family and Community. And in the audience tonight, we have Ms. Uh, Nora Egan, who is a board member of that wonderful organization. Uh, they hosted a beautiful fundraiser this weekend to raise funds for families that are in need over the holidays. Um, they do Thanksgiving baskets and gifts for families at each of our schools and so many service projects throughout the years, scholarships, and also um, help with the backpack program. So Ms. Egan, I just wanted to thank you for your service and all that your organization is doing, especially over the holidays, to help families that are in need and under-resourced. So thank you. Anyone else? Okay, well, on behalf of the entire board, we want to wish all of our students, teachers, personnel, uh, support personnel, and um, families a very, very Merry Christmas and a happy, healthful, healthy New Year. And that will do it for the year 2022. So um, we want to thank everybody for all of their tremendous um, work throughout the year and uh, again a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? There's a motion by Mr. Campbell <laughs> and seconded by Mr. Egan. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you and good night. <laughs>